Hello guys, welcome to Visor Down. My name is Alex and we've got a really special one today. We've come out to Mandello del Lario in Italy. God, my Italian pronunciation is not the one. But we've got this in front of us and it's a very special bike from Moto Guzzi. They've just celebrated 100 years and this bike is what they say is going to take them into the next 100 years. So much to talk about on this one. I don't even think I'm going to get it in the whole video. So you might have to go to visordown.com. But in any case, let's get on with the video, talk about the bike, what it's all about, what's good, what's new and what these wings are about. So, to start things off, I really want to talk about these wings. It's the first time that adaptive aero wings have been fitted to a motorcycle. And basically what that means is the wings here, you might see a little clip now, they go out and in depending on the riding mode and depending on how you're riding. So if you've got it in rain mode, they're always out. And if you've got it in sport mode, they're always in. But you can adjust it in the settings and you can basically fiddle about to adjust how much protection you're going to be getting. And I found that they're actually pretty good. They're not noticeably different so you're not riding along and you think oh I'm in a cocoon and then I'm not in a cocoon but they do deflect a bit of the rain away and the adjustable screen which goes up and down 90 mil does quite a lot to put this into the touring market that sort of roads to touring that Moto Guzzi are looking for but realistically this bike is built from the ground up they've quite literally gone straight back to the drawing board of this one and of course they've taken some of their heritage pieces some of the bits that they're looking at from their history to take this bike into a unique future and I say unique because this bike, I really can't think of anything that's a direct competitor. You might look at the Tuono, you might look at, say, even like the Versus or something like that, that's a 17-inch uh, wheel tourer. But this really is unique. On the roads, the brand new motor is an absolute treat to play with. It's a 1048cc, of course, inverse, 90-degree V-twin, and it's got so much torque to play with. 105 newton meters of torque at its peak and 85% of that torque is available from around 3,500 revs and when you're cruising 3,500 revs is exactly where you sit so quite literally at the twist of a throttle you're away so sticking with the motor whilst I'm talking about it it's entirely brand new of course it's familiar it's still the 90 degree transverse v-twin and it's 1048 cc 115 brake horsepower already spoken about the newton meters of torque at 105 but it's also now got liquid cooled, it's got a wet clutch, it's ride by wire. And this one, the S model, has a quick shifter up and down. In terms of power output, this is right up there. It's not going to be ripping your arms off, no bike really does. But on the road, this feels incredibly smooth and linear. I was sitting in third gear and second gear for quite a lot of the ride today, which is twisty and turny. And as you can see, the footage, it was a little bit grey. So the roads were a little bit damp, but this handled it supremely well. Just to jump ahead real quick, a lot of that is to do with the electronic suite that's fitted onto this bike and it's spec to the nines. You've got a six axis IMU, you've got cornering ABS, you've got cruise control, heated grips, adjustable screen. There's loads of electronics on this that's been packed in. And also the Moto Guzzi MIA system, which is basically smartphone integration, top spec stuff. So I've already got a little bit excited and spoken a lot about the bike, but I haven't really even told you how much it is, when it's available. So let's just touch on that now. The V100 Mandelo comes in two forms, and there's four or five, if you include the limited edition, colors to pick from. So we've been riding the Mandelo S, which has the semi-active suspension, which has all of the sort of bonus bits thrown in, like the phone integration, quick shifter, heated grips. You've also got the standard Mandelo, and that one's priced at around about 12,500 pounds, and that's available, we've been told, from around about November onwards, so pretty soon. The Mandelo S, which again we've been riding, is priced up at 15,750, so 15,750 pounds. And again, you get a little bit more of a spec'd up model with that. The adaptive aero is included, of course, which is quite a major selling point. A little bit gimmicky, perhaps, who knows, but it's very nice to have it on there. Turn on the bike in rain mode and it comes out. I mean, that's just like a fighter jet. Speaking of a fighter jet, they've got the Navy edition. I'm just gonna proper English it there. But basically that's, style to look like a navy bike in terms of a fighter plane and it looks stunning there's only going to be around 1913 of those units so they're probably going to sell out instantly because i think this bike is going to be a top seller and yeah that really looks nice but we didn't get to see it in the flesh today to real touch on the colors really quickly you've got the standard mode sorry the standard edition which is in white and red and then you've got the Specked up S, which is in this one, which I absolutely love with the green, the grey, and then you've got like a more darker grey edition as well that you can pick from. 
So in terms of riding this bike, it's quite compact. I was expecting it to be a little bit bigger than it is in person, but it still fits me. The seat is 810 mil, so you feel like you're really sat in, in the bike, really. And they've got a higher seat, a lower seat, and sort of heated seat varieties for those. And yeah, the higher seat is going to be making you lean a little bit more forward, put a little bit more weight on the bars. But the standard seat for me as a six foot three rider is pretty good going. I was quite comfortable on it all day. We didn't cover a huge amount of miles as a touring bike, you might expect that, but it was raining and we were taking it nice and steady on some of the twistier bits of the road. But this bike's very, very comfortable. You've got a 17 litre tank as well. And I was trying to work out the sort of liters per 100 kilometers figure which is around 4.7 is quoted at that but if you're really pushing on in some of the road bits it changes so they're estimating around 200 miles per tank for a 17 liter tank that's pretty good going i'll also just quickly throw in the style of this bike is absolutely incredible we're of course having the pre-ride chat and the briefing about the bike and the style that's been put into this is very reminiscent of their heritage but then also quite muscular bold and just a very nice looking bike. The engine plays a huge part of that as a stressed member of the chassis and it just all flows together very nicely. The screen itself going up and down, if you put it in down mode, wings out, it's basically a fighter jet. Of course, the S model has the electronic suspension. These are Olins on the standard edition, they're Kayaba forks, which are fully adjustable, but just not electronically. And in terms of the rider modes, depending on what you ride in, so if it's sport, the suspension's gonna be a little bit firmer. If you're riding in tour or road mode, it's a little bit more comfortable and soft. And then in rain mode, of course, you're looking at a softer ride and less power going directly to the rear wheel via that shaft drive. If you're riding in sport mode, the electronic suspension did feel a little bit firm on some of these roads, but if you're pushing on sort of perfectly laid tarmac, I think this is gonna be a very interesting bike to ride on perfect roads. Some of the roads here were quite familiar to me in the UK and I was riding in more of a tour mode where the power is still there and you can still twist on and accelerate nicely, but the suspension works a little bit to soften it up. I will also throw in that the quick shifter, it does work, of course, but there were some points where going from first to second when accelerating would make it really lurchy. So you're going from first into second and you sort of pop in the front wheel a bit as the power sort of just bursts into second gear. I was trying this at all sorts of different speeds and because it was quite wet, I just decided to use a clutch instead. When you're going down and popping down the gears, the exhaust starts popping and banging, smoothly going into second and first gear. Incredible stuff. So continuing on from there, the brake package, I really enjoyed the brakes on these. It's Brembo front and rear, cornering ABS of course, 320 mil twin disc at the front, at the rear you've got 250 mil or thereabouts, single disc. And yeah, the braking performance, I was very seriously impressed here. There's quite a nice initial bite, so when you pull in the lever, you feel like the bike is really starting to work. And I would say that some of the other bikes I've ridden where the braking feels quite soft until you really apply the brakes, this felt completely different. So the braking performance with the Brembos, incredible. Got to say, really nice work. I did also feel like the ABS on sort of wet roads did start kicking in a little bit. Natural, I mean, of course, on wet roads, the rear wheel is going to start spinning up a little bit. And yeah, but the ABS did start to kick in, didn't unsettle the ride at all. And all in all, in corners, this thing felt incredible. Very smooth, very nimble and surprisingly easy to throw into corners, considering it weighs around about 233 kilograms wet. And of course, me on top as a 13 and a bit stone rider, it's quite a lot of weight on the road, but felt very nimble and I was very impressed there. Particularly when you're riding in town, you can sort of chuck this thing around. It was very nice. So before I wrap this one up, also on this bike, there's loads of accessories. Of course, you might be able to see here, there's integrated luggage or panniers that you can put on there. And then there's gonna be a top box that you can chuck on the back as well. The panniers themselves are 30 liters and 28 liters. The top box is 37 liters. We didn't get to see those in use. There was one displayed with the touring screen and the panniers and top box for us to look at. And apparently you can get a helmet in the panniers and then therefore in the top box as well. So quite a decent amount of storage on offer there, but I can't comment exactly because we didn't get to properly play around with it. Going on from the accessories, the standard edition, you can spec up with some of the standard bits from this. There's a USB hole at the front that isn't in use because that's an accessory. The USB socket is underneath the seat. There's loads of accessories here basically you can play about with, you can start specking it up. If you're looking at something like knuckle guards and stuff like that, I'm sure they're gonna have those on there. But in terms of base price, what you get for the bike, especially the S model, really like it. Now, 
I will just quickly summarise that the Mandelo Delario Lake Como, absolutely incredible place to ride around. Um, the weather hasn't been the greatest, and um, it's been ruined by a lot of fog for most of the day. But if you came here in summer, I think you'd have an incredible time riding around. The Moto Guzzi factory, we're told, is open for anyone to come and visit. So to me, that sounds like a summer ride out plan. Riding around Lake Como, come to visit Moto Guzzi in their home. Sounds fantastic. And also the food, incredible. But that's another story. In any case, I feel like I've rambled on enough. Let's wrap this one up. Visedown.com is going to be where you find the full written review. It's going to be a little bit more coherent. You're going to be able to find all the specs, details, what I thought of the road ride. You can also go onto our social media and check out the first ride thoughts there because we're always updating our social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even TikTok now. Look at us go. But go onto all of those, follow us on there if you don't already. Whilst you're on this video though, I'd very much appreciate if you liked it, subscribed, comment down below what you think about this bike. I genuinely think this is going to be a very, very important bike for Motoguzzi going forward and a top seller. I'm going to just go and put it out there in 2023. Well worth a test ride in any case. But let us know what you think in the comments down below. I will sign off though. So much rambling. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Alex. Ciao.